English Across the Pond. Hello! 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 Hi, everybody, and welcome. You are tuned. You're listening to English Across the Pond. Good day to you. I hope you're having a lovely day today and that you're looking forward to the next 20, 25, 30 minutes, not really sure, in our lovely company. There are two people on this English language podcast and one of them lives in America. That's not me. I'm from England, but my partner Jennifer, she lives across the pond in Sandy, not Sandy, but San Diego. How are you, Jennifer? Hey, what a lovely introduction. There are two people here. Very close to my microphone is my kitty cat Lulu purring, so you might even hear a third a third uh, body on this show. Hello from Lulu and me in America. Hello. Jennifer and Lulu, here I'm alone. My cat Sylvia is out and about, probably, as we speak, tearing a mouse in half. Something like oh, that. Oh, gosh. Good goodness. My name's Dan. Is... Go on. <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> My name's Dan. Um, I'm a British English teacher coming at you from a small town in northeast England, Scarborough. This podcast, Scarbados, this podcast is coming up to five years. Soon we will have a little cake and uh, with candles, five candles on. But we're more than, it's not just a podcast. Membership, courses, telegram groups. Why don't you hop on over to our website and take a look? Can you guess the website? Yeah, englishacrossthepond.com. Have a look there. On the front it says, we are more than just a podcast. And you can click on these images. Very nice. Right, we're talking about wildflowers today. And ten minutes ago, I was saying to my lovely, beautiful, amazing partner. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Now, we've actually got too much to talk about. So, Jennifer, serious. This is, I'm being serious right now, okay? If you've got any wildflower stuff, you better say it now, because I've got a hat full of stuff to get through. So, come on. Let's have it, please. Come on, please. It's wildflower week. Oh, that yeah. is yeah. what inspired the podcast. It's wildflower week, a week to honor, to celebrate, to talk about, to love, to plant, to to marvel at wild flowers. Wildflowers are flowers that kind of grow in the wild. They grow naturally in certain types of environments, certain types of landscapes. They kind of reseed themselves and just grow naturally and natively in a certain area. So wildflowers that are common in, you know, Southern California will be different than those in Montana, different than those in Texas, different than those around New York, different than those in the UK. Yeah, damn right. Yeah. For example, wild. Yeah. Our poppies are red, and your poppies are orange. Orange California poppies are our official state flower as well. They are gorgeous. I'm going to try and remember to post a picture. Listeners, remind me. Members in Telegram, remind me to post the pictures. A couple years ago, the poppies were like, because of the rain that had happened in the winter, the poppies were blooming like more than they had bloomed in years. It was attracting attention all over California. People were driving like hours upon hours to go to these poppy fields, um, like just naturally growing on the hillside of the road. There was a lot of drama with like people stomping on flowers to get out in the middle to take pictures for the, in for the gram, for Instagram. Oh, I'm going to share the pictures. I love poppies. Red nice. poppies, though. What is that all about? Uh, death. Oh. If you must ask. Oh, okay. When we commemorate the wars, 
uh, in particular, the First World War, 1914 to 1918. We remember it with images of poppies because many of the soldiers died in poppy fields. And in November every year, on the streets are the old soldiers and you give them some money and they give you a little kind of like paper poppy that you stick in your coat. And this money goes to help the old soldiers. So it's a it's a melancholy, somber flower, yeah. the poppy. I'll tell you another thing about a poppy. If you get some poppy seeds off your bread and chuck them in your garden, they are impossible. It's almost impossible once you have poppies to get rid of them again because they've already reseeded themselves. So, um, yeah, if you've got poppies, good luck with not having poppies. Just leave them anyway. They're nice. You know, what's wrong with you? <sighs> So gorgeous. Yeah. Love them. Wildflowers, before we get into other types of flowers, a wildflower can also be used to describe a person. Oh. Right. Have you ever heard Am of I that? one? Am I one? Mm, maybe back in your heyday. <laughs> I'm in my heyday, thank you. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is my finest hour. I do nothing but improve. I'm on my way. I know, way. we are all... <laughs> <laughs> Rude. But <laughs> wildflowers, like if somebody is a wild... Oh, she's as wild as a wildflower. Oh, yeah. She's like a wildflower. Oh. He is like a wildflower. This might mean... I was finding a couple of different, you know, definitions when I really wanted to, to fine-tune and make sure I really knew what I was talking about on this episode. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. It could be described as someone who's really joyful, really positive, really carefree. If we think about a wildflower, you know, they're just happy. They're beautiful to look at. You know, they're just so, they don't care. They just grow wherever they want. You know, they're happy. Yeah. They're happy yeah. about it. But on that, they can grow wherever they want. A wildflower, if somebody is like a wildflower, it could also be, you know, they can go wherever they want they're happy wherever they are they kind of travel and live from place to place dan you've been in the same place for a while that's why i think yeah. back in your heyday when you used to like oh, travel all around the world you were you were you know as wild as a wildflower back then now you're like a wildflower in your positivity and joyfulness how about that yeah, I think uh, back in the day, I was geographically a wildflower, whereas now mentally I'm a wildflower. <laughs> yes. Because, I'll tell you why. Because kind of... I bravely grow wild and free in a world plagued by conformity. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. <laughs> I like that. It's good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I read um, it off the internet. I was, I was going to say it's kind of common to to use things to describe people like she's as free as a wildflower what are some what else to you know i was trying to think of some before we hit record you reminded me of cunning as a fox as, as thick, hungry as a hippo as thick as two short planks oh i've never heard of that one before very stupid oh <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that? Well, it's like that person is as stupid as two pieces of wood. <laughs> uh, as thick uh, as two short planks. We say that in our yeah. loving, kind, generous English language. Yeah, thick as two plank. short planks. It's, they're as thick as thieves. Yeah, different meaning, isn't it? Different meaning. Do you guys say that? They're as yeah. thick as thieves. Yeah. yeah. And um, can I do one more? Yeah. As blind as a bat. Bat. Bats aren't blind, though. I didn't say. <laughs> no. I I think that's a com I think that's a common thing. Bats bats aren't really blind, right? Well, don't they use sonar, radar? Not sonar. I think maybe sonar's yeah. for the water or radar. Do they, do, they, do they? Hold on. Bats are not blind. Bats have small eyes with very sensitive sensitive vision, which helps them see in conditions we might consider pitch black. Oh wow! Go bats! Cute little guys. I love bats. They're so cute. Okay, but that's not our topic. Our topic is. 
I'm sorry. I'm just still thinking about bats. Our topic is wild wildflowers. Can I go now with wildflowers? Yeah. Right. Everyone around the world who's listening, get comfy. We are going to talk about Japanese knotweed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to go there, Jennifer. I am going to go there. Right, so. I know. Listen carefully. This is a headline. It grows rapidly. It's nearly impossible to kill. It is terrorizing England, and now it's on its way to America. So, <laughs> Japanese knotweed has very nice white flowers. They're kind of like a trumpet. They look like a trumpet, the, the flowers. They're very pretty, very white, look very innocent. Japanese knotweed was brought over to the UK by a Dutch gentleman in 1850. 170 years ago and he went to this garden in London and said look I've got this lovely present for you it's called Japanese knotweed may it be beautiful in your garden it now is like pulling the UK (laughs) it's pulling the UK to pieces if Jennifer listen up right if there is Japanese knotweed within I think it's maybe three meters of your house the the value of your house will be considerably less. Yes, I know. Ooh. I know. Because what Japanese knotweed does is it goes under. It grows underneath the ground and pops out. And it will make your house unstable. It's seriously mm, like yes. bad stuff. It's all over the place and bizarrely once you start to notice it me and my daughter a couple of years ago honestly we're going oh my god it's here look and then like if three days later we'd be going oh my god look it's there it's absolutely everywhere and in my town scarborough we have these zones where they're like do not walk on the grass do not touch this green you know this bank or this little mini park because there's japanese knotweed experiments going on where they're trying to eradicate it because it suffocates and kills other flowers and it under it makes uh it causes landslides it is wow yeah oh well you kind of bring up an interesting point about the difference between a weed and a flower a wild flower yeah to me you're kind of describing more of a weed yeah. And, and weed in the name, right? A Japanese not weed. Yeah. Does a Japanese not weed flower? Are there yeah. flowers on it? Yeah, they're yeah. white, like a trumpet. Yeah. So then it could be like, what's the other one? A dandelion? Yeah, love dandelions. Some people think they're awful. Rip them out of the ground in their yard or garden. Garden, mm. if you're in the UK. Mm. You know, so what makes something a weed or a wildflower? Because a weed sounds so, ugh, so unenjoyable. A wildflower, on the other hand, sounds so like, oh. You know, I drive down anywhere. Like, I will go, actually, and, like, seek the, the spring blooms in the desert, all of the different types of flowering plants in the desert and around spring, you know, nearby. Or, like, I was just commenting on... I was in a um, a parking lot recently, and I was like, oh, my gosh, to my son, look at all of those beautiful wildflowers the other day. There was white ones, red ones, orange ones, purple ones, red, if I didn't say that, the green leaves that was growing. It was this rainbow of color just in this gray parking lot, and it was beautiful. Like, it just, it was breathtakingly gorgeous. Wow. That's a That's a good thing, right? Mm. You know, like, Mm. oh, beauty. But you would never be like, oh, look at that weed. It's so beautiful. Unless you're my friend Jason, of course, who like allows weeds to grow all over his property and get really tall. And he like really marvels at their beauty. And it's a weed. You know, other people look at it and be like, oh, pull your weeds. But he's like, oh, no, it's doing so much on the land. It's aerating, I think, aerating the ground and enriching the soil. And like, oh, gosh. Don't get me started, Dan. Mm. I could go on forever. I can tell. 
But but I guess sorry. Go before I went on my rant. Going back to the um, the point is, what's the difference between a weed and a wildflower? Well, during your lovely story, I've done a few seconds of research, and if it looks good when it's growing, <laughs> I've got a feeling though that like if a wildflower came up in your front yard where you very carefully taken a lot of time to create a beautiful garden you'd be like oh i hate you you horrible weed but that very same weed given its own space and its own time to grow and to flourish would be considered a wildflower i think it depends on context jennifer Mm, what do you what do you think i think it's kind of like the same thing i was trying to read a definition as well it's kind of like a flowering weed is going to be just as attractive as any wild flower and when we talk about like bees you know the honeybees bees you know they swarm the flowers they love the flowers they need all the pollen pollen of the flowers you know they won't really go to like a, a regular weed to do that but they will go to a flowering weed mm. you know so in that case a flowering weed could be considered a wildflower and that's exactly like what we were talking about with the dandelion and just to go off on a tangent it's like for example a young kid, has he got a ADHD or is he just a beautiful, lively, inquisitive little human being? Mm-hmm. My, my goodness me. Is that little child a wildflower or is he a weed? Whichever, whichever he is, probably better to give him some Ritalin just to be on the safe side. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> um... I was also just thinking when I was saying dandelion that, that a da- there's dandelion like tea. There's a lot yeah, of really yeah. healthy properties in that. So then there's that plant like a stinging nettle. Yeah, stinger. Urtica dioica is uh, beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so a stinging nettle. It's a tall perennial. Perennial, yeah. yeah. Broad leaf weed that often grows in colonies. Yeah. So this stinging nettle is considered a weed, but this also has tons of healthy benefits like you could make into a tea. Sure. Do you, do they does it grow in California? Oh yes. And my the friend that I was talking about, Jason, has tons on his property. And my son went barefoot into the backyard and <laughs> cool. stepped all over it and was like crying. We're like, Oh, it's the stinging nettle, so now he calls it is this stinging metal (laughs) close he calls it metal it's so cute is this stinging metal he was like traumatized by it but can i say wherever stinging nettles grow nearby dock leaves grow and dock leaves are an antidote to the venom of the nettle dot i'm like a horticulturalist me aren't i i know i should have my own podcast (laughs) Is it a dock leaf? D O C K dock. Yeah, D O C K dock leaf. Oh, do dock leaves really help stinging? Help nettles sting? It's often claimed that crushed dock leaves relieve the pain because their alkaline sap neutralizes the nettles' formic acid. Look at that, Dan. And you thought this wasn't going to be a enriching, yeah. helpful, just I mean. People are walking away from this particular podcast episode with pronunciation differences, with a little bit of American and British English. They're walking around with native herbal medicine abilities. They now can make tea out of dandelion and they can look at the benefits of these weeds. I mean, we're helping more than just language today, Dan. I imagine there's one or two people, more probably more than one or two, who are either... They've probably collapsed from the level of information that they've been receiving and they're just lying on the floor. Or they're just crying a little bit about all the beautiful things we've been talking about, weeping quietly in a nice way. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Now. We're here. You're welcome, everybody. 
can, what were you can, gonna say? One, I have so, yeah. Uh -huh. You can I? This is a bit weird. Yeah, please. One of my uh, favourite poems does involve the mention of uh, wild flower. It's only twelve lines. Do you want to hear it? Yes, please. It's amazing. The first four lines, if I could write four lines like this, I would um, happily hang up my pen. The title of the poem is called Cut Grass, or as they say in the south of England, Cut Grass. Let's do this. Listen to the beginning. Cut grass lies frail. Brief is the breath. Moan stalks exhale. Long, long the death. It dies in the white hours of young leafed June, with chestnut flowers, with hedges snow like strewn. White lilac bowed, lost lanes of Queen Anne's lace, and that high builded cloud moving at summer's pace. Mm. <laughs> Good, isn't it? Queen's Queen Anne's lace. You were talking about that. That's one. a wildflower. That... Yeah, it's gorgeous. <gasps> oh, that one is gorgeous. It grows ev everywhere. It's everywhere in this country. Oh, I love that. What's it's nice, it used isn't it? for? Oh, used for herbalism. Yeah. It's an infusion is used in the treatment of various complaints, including. Oh, anyways, I'm taking away from your beautiful poem. Thank mm. you for sharing with us. No worries. That is gorgeous. Where did you come across that poem? I just like to read poetry. Mmm. Yeah. Sometimes. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I really, 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 really want to ask you: Have you ever made a wish using a dandelion? When it has that kind of puff, that white puff ball of seeds, is it? Yeah, 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 seeds, yeah, that like they float on air, don't they? They float on the warm air. Yeah. We don't make wishes with them in the UK. We, that we have this myth that however many times it takes to blow all the seeds off, that's what time it is, which, which is always true. But we don't wish, Jenna, we don't do that. Why? Don't know. Ah, oh, it's classic. You pick it up, close your eyes, you think of a wish, and you go, <gasps> and you blow it all out. And then the idea is, is if you blow off all of the, the seeds and all of the white stuff's gone, Jeez. then your wish will come true. No pressure. If not everything is blown away, then your wish won't come true. Yeah, and you'll be cursed for a thousand years, you and all your family. No. Well, you know. It's like you better blow good, young man. You yeah. say, say to Oliver, if you don't blow them all off in one go, Oliver, your life will be terrible. <laughs> it's like, no, oh my God. No, no, <laughs> no. that would be cruel. Um, so interesting. Do you, you tell what time it is? Obviously, hmm. you have dandelions, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've got them in the garden right now. I'm going to take a picture, and this picture will be for our members. Ooh, I'm going to include pictures too. I'm just going to, let's encourage everybody to take pictures of all of the wildflowers yeah. they see, yeah. that they come across the, this week, take a picture and put it in our Telegram group. Remember, we have a free Telegram group. Everyone can post in there. We have a members Telegram group where we actually like give more feedback, answer English questions and, you know, things like that. Last thing, uh, yeah. a song that I really, really love is about a wildflower, and I'm going to be posting that in our Telegram group as well. So if you're not in our free Telegram group, you won't be able to hear the really good songs. So, you know, it's up to you if you don't like good songs and poems and nice pictures, then, you know, that's up to you. You don't have to well, come. Make, yeah, make your own decision, but there's plenty <laughs> of other benefits, more than just wildflowers. <laughs> We're oh, going to yeah. do a, a grammar <laughs> lesson, I think. I think this episode inspired our grammar lesson that our members get this month as well. Oh, yeah. Wow. Nice. Mm -hmm. So be wild. Be free, everybody. Be a wildflower this week. Thanks for listening and tuning in. Dear listeners, please bravely grow wild and free in a world plagued by conformity. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Until Have next time. a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is The Language Focus. Yes, the podcast isn't finished. If you heard Jennifer and I say goodbye and you started crying, wipe those tears away because there's a little bit more. This is The Language Focus where we look at some of the vocabulary from this week's chat. First up, heyday. Heyday. H-E-Y-D-A-Y. All one word. Heyday. And your heyday, or my heyday, or his heyday, is the period in your life that was the best. It kind of depends what kind of person you are. If you're an athlete and you run the 100 metres, your heyday will have been the time when you ran the fastest. If you're an artist, it will have been the time in your life when you painted your best pictures or took your best photographs. For a lot of us, our heyday is maybe We were single and having fun, going out, partying, carefree, and we think of this as being our happiest time. But your heyday is the best time of your life when we look back and you say, oh, my 20s were my heyday. I was working in London, earning a lot of money. I had my little car. I'd go out at the weekends for parties. I had a beautiful apartment. It was such a great time. It was my heyday. Next up, pitch black. Pitch black. And pitch there's football pitch, there's maker pitch. This is another kind of pitch, and it's a very, very black liquid. It's something related to oil, and we use it on the roads, um, like a sort of glue in the roads, you know, where cars go, and it's very, very black. So we say pitch black, meaning very black. So I think sometimes it's dark, you know, you can't really see. If you are in your living room, you can maybe see the outline of the sofa. Or you can see a light from outside. If it's pitch black, it's really, really 100% black. So dark that you really can't see anything. And it's very disorientating if somewhere is pitch black. Because... You really can't see anything, so you have to put your hands out in front of you and walk very slowly to make sure that you don't hit anything. Pitch black. Completely dark. The last piece of vocabulary... Vocabulary. I always have problems. (laughs) Uh, Vocabulary. I can do it. Um, The last piece of vocabulary that we're going to look at this week is tuning in. To tune in. Now we can tune a guitar and tune a piano and it means that we change the pitch until we find the key that we want. So, and we change the key. This is tuning. In the old days, I can't remember about this because I'm very young, but in the old days, we tuned our televisions and we tuned our radios. They had a big circular knob on, a dial, and we would move this dial to the right or to the left, looking for our favourite radio show. We don't have this so much anymore, but you're probably familiar with an old radio, and they have the bar and all of the numbers and words, and you move the circle, the knob, the control backwards and forwards to tune it to your favourite radio station. And you would tune in. If you tune in, 
you find the radio station that you want. And if you tune out, then you leave that radio station or that TV show. So when we say thank you for tuning in, it means thank you for finding us on your radio. Of course, it doesn't mean that now. Nowadays, it just means thank you for listening. Or, if it's a TV programme, thank you for watching. But we say, thank you for tuning in. And we say this because of the old way that we used to find radio and TV programmes before we went digital. Beautiful. Heyday. Pitch black. Tuning in. Goodbye. See you next time.